Hi. This is the fourth lesson in a series of five about faux wood textures. This time we're going to see how to make the large complex wood texture that we made in the first couple of lessons seamless. First, choose your two wood colors for the foreground and background. You can see mine over here in the swatches. Then run the wood grain action that we made in the first lesson of the series. If you haven't watched it yet, you can find the link in the description. When you get to the liquify step, cancel out like we did in the lesson about multicolor wood. That will give you your fibers. Repeat it with the same colors. You can change the seed if you want to when you get to the fibers step by clicking on the randomize button, but you don't have to do that. When you get to the filter, once again, cancel out at liquify. I've done all of that already to save some time. You should now have two layers like this, with fibers in the same colors on both of them and the one on the top selected. Mine happen to be different because I click the randomize button, but yours may not be. Now we need to make it seamless. So go to Filter, Other, Offset, and choose half of the width of your image for the horizontal offset and half of the height for the vertical offset. Because our image is 512 by 512 pixels, we get 256 in both of these text fields. Make sure that it's set to wrap around and click OK. And now we have this nice horizontal line through the middle of everything. We need to make that go away and we're going to do it with a mask. So go down here and click on the New Mask button at the bottom of the layer panel, and that gives us a mask. Tap the D key to set your default colors of black and white, and then tap X to swap them so that black is the foreground color. We're doing this because remember we're painting on a mask, and what is black on the mask hides the image, and what is white on the mask shows the image. It's like hiding in shadows. Black hides and white shows. And now we get the brush tool, and we're going to mess with the brush. So we'll go to the Brushes panel, which we can open here. If you don't happen to have it there, you can find it under Window, Brushes, or you can just tap the F5 key, and that'll open it. And now we're going to deselect everything that is selected in these areas here. I don't know what brush you started with, so anything may or may not be selected. Deselect all of it, and then click on Scattering to open that one up. We're going to set the scattering to about 130. Make sure that both axes is not enabled, and change the control to off. This means that it will be random. The computer will control it. Change the count to 2, the count jitter to around 50, and once more make sure that the control is off so that it's totally random. Now we're going to change the brush tip shape. So we'll start by setting the diameter to about a third of the height of our entire image. Since ours is 512 pixels, that means about 150 more or less. So that'll do. Now I want the brush dabs to be vertical, so I'm going to change the angle by using this little widget, change it to 90 degrees, you could also change it in the text field, and I want them to be very narrow, so I'm going to squash the brush roundness in um, between 8 and 12. Using the widget, once again, you could use the text field if you wanted to. I'm going to set the hardness to about 50 because I would like the brush strokes to be kind of soft, and then I'm going to change the spacing. Now you can pull it out so that they're very widely spaced, but we don't want to do that. We want to have it sort of about half full, so we're going to set it to about 50%, more or less. Now if we wanted to, we could save this brush by going over here and um, choosing New Brush Preset, but we're not going to do that right now because that takes extra time. And what we've done is made a brush that will automatically give us short vertical strokes that are tapered at both ends and kind of soft. And we don't have to actually paint all of those strokes. The brush will do it for us. So we'll just drag across. And if I hold down the Option key, that's Alt on a PC, and click on the Mask thumbnail, you can see that we've got a whole bunch of short little strokes. I'm going to hide this layer so we can see any place where we might need to retouch it a little bit. And just like that, we have seamless fibers. Now that's great, but it isn't what we actually want. So we need to start running the action again with the liquify filter. The trouble is that liquify will only work on one layer, so we need to make both of these layers into a single layer. We could merge this layer down, but if we do, then we'll lose all of these fibers. So I think what we're going to do instead is make a composite layer. Hold down Shift, Option, and Command, that's Shift, Alt, Control on a PC, and tap the E key, and we'll make a composite layer at the top of the layer stack. And now all of that information is on a single layer. And we can just run the action again and it takes us right into the liquify, which is where we left off before. And you guys don't need to see this again, so I'm going to go ahead and mess with this to liquify it, and I'll join you when I'm done. 
And that looks pretty good, so I'm going to stop here. But before I go back into the main part of Photoshop, I need to make sure that these edges are still going to be seamless. And to do that, I'm going to get the Reconstruct tool, that's the one right over here, and I'm going to make sure that the Reconstruct mode is set to Revert. And I'm going to go over all of the edges and revert them so that they will still be seamless. Now the reason that I do it this way, instead of using the um, mask, is that this way I can feather things in and um, get seamless stuff that still looks pretty good. Now, I do this, of course, because I'm a control freak. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be making wood this way in the first place. And this way I can get a, um, an end result that I prefer. So make sure that they are all seamless. Click OK, and the action will finish running. And there we have it all done with our vertical noise and everything else, except that the edges here are still kind of fibery. So we're going to select the composite layer, and I'm going to once more go to Filter, Other, Offset. The value should still say 256 on both of them. Click OK, and now we have all of our weirdness in the middle where we can work with it easily. So we're going to go back into the Liquify filter again, and I'm just going to uh, make this into wood grain. Okay, and it's not my favorite wood grain of all time, but that'll do for now. And once again, get the Reconstruct brush and just go around the edges to make sure that everything remains seamless. If you've confined most of your work to the center section, there shouldn't be a lot to do here this time, but that looks pretty good. So we'll click OK, and now we have our seamless wood grain. And to test it, we can hold down the Option key that's Alt on the PC and go to Offset so that we get the dialog box, and we can just sort of push it around a little bit, and check different places, and make sure that it's really seamless. Looks good, so we're going to cancel out of that. Now, the vertical noise up here isn't actually seamless. You will probably never, ever, ever notice that it's not. But in case you are really a control freak and you want things to be completely perfect, it's easy enough to fix this too. Let's go into the normal blending mode so that we can see it. Now remember, when we made this, the image extends a little bit off the... Whoops. Got to be careful. <laughs> Got to be careful there. The... um. Image extends a little bit off what we can see here. The layer is a little larger than the actual image is. Um, I went into transform so that you could see where the edges were. If we wrap it, then these edges, which if you recall had sort of funky stuff on the edges of them, are going to be used in the wrap, and we don't want that. So I'm going to tap the escape key and get out of this, and we're going to make a single layer out of this entire thing that doesn't have those edges on it. There are a lot of different ways to do that, but because all you can see in the image right now is this layer, the easiest thing is to make another composite. So that's Shift Option Command, that's Shift Alt Control on a PC. Tap E again to make the composite. And now we're going to offset that the same way that we have before. Just filter, offset, and it's still set to 256 pixels. So there we go with a horizontal line in the middle. We already have a mask that will take care of that. So if I hold down Option, Alt on the PC, and drag that mask up, I can duplicate it onto this layer, and we're fine. And this time, because there's nothing really interesting on these layers anyway, I'm going to go ahead and merge this down by holding down Command and tapping E. Now all we have to do is set the blend mode back to soft light, and we have an absolutely perfectly seamless wood grain. We could select all and make a pattern and let you see that again, but we're out of time, so if you want to see how to do that, you can check the last lesson. And next time, we're going to show you how to make it look like you've been carving into the wood. Until then, this has been Robin Wood, and I hope that you found this helpful.